Peace and blessings to everyone. It is yours truly. I am Amar Mari. I am the founder of El Kebalam Unity Alliance, where we focus on your spiritual, your physical, and your financial well-being. My queen, Amani Amari, she is the co-founder of El Kebalam Unity Alliance. We thank everyone so much, those of you who has shared and invited I remember sharing is caring. Uh, again, remember this is not about fame. It's, it's not about popularity. This is about transformation of our minds. I too am here to learn. As we all know, I do not know everything. So I'm also open to learn as well. Queen Mother Rhonda, my Queen Amani Amari. Thank you so much, Queens. And definitely the Queen of my heart for your continued love and support. To my cousin, Mark Walden, thank you so much for tuning in. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, we've been having some great sessions here online. Uh, I'm also going to entertain questions. It'll be a question and answer session if the time permits. Okay, uh, and uh, this is your mastermind session. This is your spiritual growth session. For those who do not know, I am a former bishop I have been delivered and set free from tradition and doctrine and commandments of men that are parasitic that had incarcerated my mind. Uh, these truths have been revealed unto me, and it would be remiss of me not to share what helped to set me free. These are things that I recognize in my own study and my own research and those things that I also searched. And today we're going to dive in with the spiritual growth session number five. Uh, Queen Mother, I thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, peace and blessing, Cousin Mark. Hey, love you, family. Thank you so much for tuning in. Queen Kia McCain, thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, this is this is not a bashing. I just want to put out that disclaimer this is not a bashing this is just revelation okay many people they have information and they can quote to you books chapters and verses it's a difference between memorization and revelation this is what people must understand because somebody can repeat to you scriptures that they have remembered, it does not mean that they understand that which they are quoting to you. In fact, some people can't even intellectually articulate and convey why they subscribe to what they subscribe to because they are doing it from what they were taught. It's a tradition. It is a habit. Some of them cannot explain to you the reason why. No more than a baby can explain to you the reason why they're saying Jesus is Lord. Okay? If you ask that child that's two years old or one years old, what does that child mean when they say Jesus is Lord? Why do they say Jesus is Lord? They will not be able to intellectually articulate and convey why they're doing it because they're not mature enough in their mind to actually tell you these things. I said that to say this. We do a lot of things because that's what we've been what? Programmed to do. So we're going to talk about these things on today. I am one who has actually experienced signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay, I flowed in uh, the gifts, um, seer, and also healing. Okay, uh, my queen Amani Mari also has these gifts as well. She and I both are former Christian teachers. Okay, so I'm not talking to you by way of what I overheard. I'm talking to you as one who has actually been involved with exorcism. Okay, so I've experienced the supernatural realm. 
I still to this day have visions and dreams. I still to this day have ward in the spirit. Okay, because you must understand when you have a charge on your life, although your mind evolves, your purpose has not changed. Although your mind evolves, your purpose in this earth realm does not change. When your mind evolves, what it does is it puts you on the right track. That's what happens. You truly come into finding out what your destiny is and you find out that the steps that you have taken was to help you to align with your destiny. I am now a spiritual man because I was raised up in the apostolic and the Pentecostal background. I didn't know that was set me up to become a spiritual teacher. I had no clue about that. Okay. And as I continue to pray and to fast and to seek out the truth, I began to rise above denominational titles and I began to rise above religious titles. And then I began to understand it's not about religion. It's about relationship. I began to understand that a lot of the teachings that were being taught to me were actually opinionative. It was man-made traditions and doctrines and commandments that were parasitic that had incarcerated my mind. I began to find out what true liberation is once I began to recognize who I truly am, that I'm a spirit being having a human experience not the other way around, okay? When I first started flowing in my gifts, I didn't recognize that I was already flowing in the gifts. I just thought that it was a coincidence. I was thinking that things that I knew, things that I seen happen, it was a coincidence. But I come to find that those things were not coincidences. I began to understand that I definitely have been here before. How do I know this? Because this life is an illusion. This place is a recording. This place is a training ground. And only those who have a higher level of consciousness are going to understand these things. These things are not for those whose consciousness have not been awakened. So... You can't expect somebody who's asleep to be aware of what's going on. Let's look at this in a natural sense. Somebody who's asleep, if something is going on around them, the only way they're going to know what's going on around them is if they wake up. So if somebody has broken into your house and you still sleep, you don't know that they're there. Why? Because you're not conscious. You're not aware of what's going on around you, but once you awaken and then you see the burglar, then you know, okay, that's the burglar. Now I can get rid of the burglar because I'm aware that there's, an, there's a burglar there. That's what happens with our consciousness. Once we become aware of the parasitic things in our lives, now we can then confront those things and then we can get rid of those things. We can ostracize those things from our life because now we are aware that those things were causing us problems. When you go to a doctor, you go to get a diagnosis. Okay, first is the prognosis. Then you come to the diagnosis, right? So you go to see what's wrong with you. Well, what I did, and there's a verse in the scriptures that I still stand by this, I still stand by things that translate over to the spiritual realm. Those who are not sick have no need of a, of a physician, but those who are sick are in need of a physician. So I went to the spiritual doctor, the creator, and I began to inquire, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with my mind? 
Why am I this way? What What's occurring in my life that's causing my life to be chaotic? I personally received answers. And I personally found out that religiosity was not the answer for myself. And neither is it for all humanity. But human beings have to come into the knowledge of these things. And these things will be revealed unto them in a season. Okay? In a particular season, certain things are not revealed unto us until we are consciously ready for us to embrace those things. Okay, now, information was passed to me prior to me becoming aware of the toxic things that I was taught that was incarcerating me. Okay, again, man-made traditions and doctrines and commandments, you know, that are toxic. Okay, so when I began to recognize these things, I began to detox because I recognized that these things were intoxicating me. These things were keeping me from growing at my full potential. What were these things? Religious viewpoints. Religious opinions. Okay? I began to recognize that I was speculating. And I'm going to give you an example. I personally had not seen the actual form of this being, this higher power called God. Okay? In my Yoruba tongue, which I know my I know my culture now and everything else, so now I know. Ola Dumare, right? I had not seen Ola Dumare. It's, it's the Yoruba tongue, okay, for, for the creator. I had not seen the creator for me to be able to put a actual gender title on the creator to say that the creator is a he. Now, this is Amar talking to you. I'm not speaking for nobody else because everybody can only speak from their experience. This is what makes you a witness because if you have not seen or heard or had some type of experience, then you're a false witness because you're talking secondhand. You're not talking from personal experience. I'm telling you what I personally experienced. Okay? Now, I had to be honest with myself. I said the only reason why I'm saying he is not because I've had a interface with this being. Okay? I'm saying he because I was taught from a child to my adulthood, from my adolescence years to adulthood that it's a he. I'm only saying a he it's, the, the creator is a he because of what the text says, not because of my experience, not because I personally seen this being. No, I was only saying that because I was taught that I was no different than a one or two year old child that only repeats what they say, not because they comprehend what they what they what they're saying, not because they actually experience what they're saying, but they're only repeating what they heard because that's what they were taught. And I personally come to find that I was repeating things that I had been taught, not from experience. I could not prove these things that I was talking about. The only thing I could do was referred to ink and paper. That was it. Not experience. When it came to that particular experience that I've mentioned to you, I could talk about the healing power. Okay, I could talk about what happened when I invoked the name Jesus. Although uh, Yeshua technically, okay, would not have had the name Jesus because first of all, in the Hebrew, and in the Greek, some people like to say it's Greek. It's not Greek either. It is a it is a linguistical and it is an etymological fact that the letter J does not to this day exist. Okay, in the Hebrew nor the Greek language, which means that this deity that I was invoking, I had no idea was spiritual 
being I was actually dealing with because that's not actually what that person's name would have been if that person should have existed. Okay, so I have a statement because, you know, we got people out here in the audience and whatnot. So I want to um, say uh, Queen Kia said, yeah, personal witness. Yes. And uh, Queen Mother Rhonda said we have to know the truth to know the truth. Absolutely. Um, Malachi said, if I'm correct, the Bible never made mention that God is a he. So that has been taught in error anyways. Well, there in the text actually does say he, um, you know, it says, um, he in a lot of places, it says father, you know what I'm saying? Um, in some places, it makes reference of he. And in there, if you go to the Old Testament and the New Testament, you know, it does say he. Because when Yeshua and John, when he prayed, he said father, so which is pretty much a male figure, you know, and, and what have you. And so, you know, that those are the verses that I really know about where it really says more so he a lot in there. You know, so that's where I see he at. Um, and in the old covenant, you know, um, it actually says the spirit of wisdom in Proverbs says she. The spirit of wisdom actually in Proverbs says she. So. That's what I've seen in my study, my research. But some people today, they call this, they call this a great falling away. All right. Some, some people call it the great falling away about those of us who are coming conscience. And, and I don't expect, I don't expect them to say anything less than what they're saying. I, I don't expect for them to, to, to not talk in the Christian mind. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't expect that. Okay. Um, I'm only telling you what has happened to me, my personal experience about what I've experienced. I've seen that what happened was that man had put man. Okay. On a pedestal. Okay. And they'll tell you when you're questioning the teachings, even though Acts chapter number 16 all right, excuse me, Acts chapter number 17, verse 11. Let me quote this to you. It says, they search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said is so. Now, in the very book that they read from, it says, again, Acts chapter 17, verse number 11. It says, they search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said is so. So, a lot of the problem is this. People don't even understand it's okay to question the creator in a sense of trying to get answers. I don't question God in a challenging way. I only question Ola Dumare, the creator, to gain information, to have an understanding, to receive direction. I'm not questioning God. I'm talking to a human being. Okay? When you go to an apostle, a bishop, a pastor, you know what I'm saying, an elder, okay, and whatsoever other title, an imam, an Islam, you're not questioning God. You're questioning the man about what they meant by what they said. Okay? If a man or a woman says God said something, or God told me to write something. What is man for man not to be questioned? Who is man for man not to be questioned? But what has happened is they have put man in a higher position in the creator. All right. And when you're praying and you're seeking for guidance and for answers, 
You're looking for answers so that you can have guidance. Okay? You're looking for navigation through this life. It is a big difference when you're questioning the creator, the grand creator in that sense. Okay? Now, if a man says, well, the Lord told me that no woman should preach. Why would I not challenge that? Why, why wouldn't I challenge that? Give me a good reason why I wouldn't challenge a man saying the Lord told him or her or a woman even saying this, a woman shouldn't preach. Why would I not challenge that? And see what happens is with this religious dogma, okay, they put man in a place where he or she doesn't belong. I have a right to question what you're teaching. If you're coming to me saying that God said something to me and I never heard it, I'm going to question that because I pray every day. So why didn't the creator say that to me? I certainly didn't hear it. Okay. And then they get mad because they're speaking out of their soul. You know what? That's why I love reading scripture and even also reading how the prophets even dealt with other prophets. The prophet said, they say that the Lord has said it, but that's not what the Lord has said. So they're lying. They speak out of their own soul. I personally experienced these things. A man come up to me, happened to me more than one time. They come up to me, prophet lying. They wasn't prophesying. They were speaking out of their emotions and their feelings. And I put them on the spot and I rebuke them on the spot. You're lying. The no, the Lord did not tell you that. Oh, well, what about this? Is this true? Oh, what about that? Is that true? What about this? No, see, now you're feeling. A true person that has a gift of seeing does not have to get a lead to tell you anything because the gift naturally flows. The gift naturally flows as a seer. Okay? Let me break this down to you because I flow in the gifts. Okay? This is the reason why some people didn't like me because I would call their behinds out. Okay? Once you, once you understand this family, once you evolve in your mind, okay? Once you evolve in your mind, let me get a little situated here. All right. Once you evolve in your mind. Okay. You no longer have to question what's fake or what's real. What's authentic and what's synthetic. Once you evolve in your consciousness, you automatically know how to separate man's opinion from what's divine. How do you know? Listen. Listen, how do you know? How do you know when man is talking and when the divine is talking? Let me tell you how you know. Because what man says never makes sense. What a human being says like a woman can't go to heaven because she wear a lipstick. I've heard this foolishness. I'm not making it up. A woman, she won't make it into everlasting life. Because she she have on a short sleeve shirt and her arm is showing. I'm not making this up. I've heard this foolishness. If her toes is showing, oh, she's not going to make it into heaven because her toe is showing. I'm not making this up. These are the man-made traditions and the doctrines and commandments that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Honoring your mother and your father. That's not debatable. I'm not talking about husbands love your wives and wives love your husbands and not committing adultery and not lying and not stealing and not killing and not robbing. Those type of teachings are not debatable because they're moral issues. We're talking about man-made, okay, teachings and, and man-made accesses to the divine. These are the things that I'm talking about. 
I'm not refuting living a moral and wholesome life. That's not debatable with me. I don't believe in homosexuality. That's not debatable with me. I don't believe in bestiality. That's not debatable with me. I don't believe in lying and cheating and robbing and racism. That's not debatable with me. What I'm talking about is these man-made things that these people bring up, okay, like denomination. That causes division. I will continue to call that mess out, okay? The divine does not bring confusion. These are the things I'm talking about, okay? When you start telling a woman, let, listen to me clearly, listen to me clearly, listen to me clearly. Over time, clothing has evolved. There was a time that men didn't even wear pants, okay? For myself, let me break it down to you very quickly, okay? For my ancestors, my minds, okay? My ancestors come from Ghana and Nigeria, okay? For myself, for the Ghanaian people, we will wear a, a kente cloth. We will wear that. Okay? I wouldn't even wear it, but we wear what I'm wearing right now. This is modern day El Kebalan dressing. We didn't have shirts with sleeves on it in ancient times. This is not antiquity. Okay? So over time, clothing has evolved. Okay? So listen. How is a woman wrong if she goes to a woman department store? This is the problem. These are the things I keep trying to help people to understand. If she goes to a woman department store and buy women's clothing, women's pants, just like you have women button-up shirts, the woman's shirt, the button-up shirt, and women, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's on the left side. The men's is on the right side. We, we both have, you got women polo shirts, you got men polo shirt, okay? But see, this is why I say that this is a bunch of man-made foolishness. Now, what does that have to do with a woman's soul, okay? What does that have to do with the good the deeds that she's done in this earth, being a good wife, being a good mother, okay? Doing good deeds. What does that have to do with being moral, that makes absolutely no sense. So she's considered to be unclean because she's wearing women pants? Pants didn't even exist at one time for a man. At time, men didn't even wear pants. And in fact, men will wear gar men wore garments that today will be considered to be in the European eyes as a dress. These things are nothing but bondage. And somebody said it right. Queen Darlene Stewart said, the creator is worried about your heart. Exactly. Exactly. Even in, even in comedic science, right? It talks about, may your heart be light as a feather. That is talking about being a moral person. Even in comedic science, it talks about a day of judgment. Okay? In comedic, in, in, in the Kemet teaching, it talks about a day of judgment. The day of Maya. You know what I'm saying? When you get judged. Okay? According to your works, whether or not your works are good or bad. Okay? It talks about that. And it says on that day, in other words, when it's time for you to transition from this earth realm, it says your spirit will be judged. You'll be put upon the scales. In other words, your life will be judged what you did and how you lived your life. Okay? Is your heart pure? This is what matters. And the reason why this thing about speaking in tongues don't make any sense to me is because which one is more powerful? Living a wholesome life or took a messiah? Listen, I was in the church. I seen people fall on the floor. I seen people run up and down the aisle and I seen them come after somebody's husband. I seen these same people 
Come up and stand up between, you know what I'm saying, me and my ex-wife. The same one that just finished teaching and preaching. Come stand up in my house. Come to my house. Okay, and talk about me. Didn't even know I heard what he and she was talking about. The same ones that, oh, God said, ha, and I stood in my own house, didn't know I was standing there and was talking about me like I was nothing and turned around and see me and about jumped out of their doggone skin. That's why I'm not concerned about that. I'm not concerned about nobody speaking at Rock Hatama. Man, please. How do you treat your neighbor? But see, man is the one who makes these things up. Man is the one that makes these things up and say, well, you need to do this to be right with God. You need to do this to be, wait a minute. So you heard God tell you that. So God came to you and told you that. And just because you, you, you know, you say that God said that, that doesn't mean that God said it. Okay, it's called psychosis. Okay, meaning that they're hearing voices. Okay, they think it's somebody talking to them, but, but nobody really talking to them. Okay, and, and a lot of times it's just themselves talking to them, but they put cosign it with God on it. Okay, their emotions and their feelings. All right. My brother, Brother Harry said, Paul even said, it is best not to speak with tongues if no one is there to translate. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let's deal with that tongue thing. Those of you who like to research, those of you who really want to learn, go search voodoo. Go search voodoo. Voodoo it is a historical fact that voodoo predates Christianity. And guess what they talk about? The Holy Spirit. See, our people just don't know our culture. Our people just don't know our background. Our people don't understand things that we do that is in our DNA. Like brothers out there that pour um, liquor to their friends or they lost loved ones. That's called libations. Okay? It is in our DNA. A lot of the stuff we do, the dancing that we do, people speaking in tongues, that's voodoo. It is, a, it is a fact. Those who are in voodoo, they speak in tongues and they believe in the Holy Spirit and they believe in only one creator, the creator of all things. But see, people speak about stuff ignorantly and don't know what they're talking about. And that's what Christianity does. It makes you despise your own self. It tells our women that they can't braid their hair. They can't embrace their own culture. And if they do that, it's considered to be wrong. It's, it's, it's not considered to be an upright thing to do. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense that if a woman has broidered hair, that she is not upright. That does not make any sense. That's how you know man is involved in it. Okay? Listen. We're in the matrix. Everybody has their purpose. Everybody, everybody on this earth has their purpose. Once the light came on for me, I understood my purpose. And my purpose is, is to go help people consciousness to awaken. We are in a matrix. And if you watch the movie Matrix, if you look at the scene where the key master, once his work was finished, the agents came and said, okay, your work is done here. Now you're terminated. It's time for you to be terminated. It's time for you to be deleted. Okay. This world is an illusion. This is the reason why you see stuff uh, and then it happens. This world is a recording. This, all the stuff we see is an illusion. Okay, it's just like a movie. When you see a movie, right? You're not watching the movie. 
while it was being made, you watching the movie after it's being made. So you're watching something that's already happened. That's how life is. This is the reason why we know things and we like, I don't know how I know that. Oh, this is going to happen because it already happened. There's no such thing as really the future. What you see has already happened. This, this life is just a recording. This is the reason why we know certain things. It's because it, it, it's, it's already happened. These people, we already know them in other lifetimes. This is the reason why certain people you connect with and other people you don't connect with because it's called soul family. It's called a soul tie. Okay? Listen, listen to me closer. Just because somebody is biologically your family doesn't mean you're going to get along with them. You only get along with them because it's a spiritual connection. Okay? Your true family is actually your spiritual family. Okay? Not your physical family, your biological family. Those are just vessels by which we use to come into this earth. Okay? This is only for those who have a higher understanding, a higher consciousness. Those who have evolved and, and, and we've evolved, we transition past these man-made traditions and doctrines, okay? We've evolved past what we see with the physical eye. We transform because we understand there's more than meets the eye, like the transformers. It's more to what we see. Okay? People... That is not your soul family. You will not have a connection with them. Okay, that's why we got to stop being so offended. You know what I'm saying? Because those who are meant to be in your life will be in your life. Listen, they're not tailored, made in heaven to fit your life. That's why they're not suitable to be in your life. The only people that you're going to jail with are those who are on the same spiritual plane as you. They're your soul family, okay? And so a lot of you, you think you're crazy. You think you're out your mind. You know what I'm saying? You think you're weird. No, you're not. You're just a supernatural being. You're gifted. You have superpowers, okay? And you need to embrace who you actually are, Okay? I've seen people heal before my very eyes. I've seen a person, I've seen reconstruction miracles. I've seen a person's leg grow right in front of me. I've seen this with my own eyes. It scared me. When I first started praying with, on pe praying with people, the prayer of faith and healing, okay? And, and I felt that energy exude from my body. And I've seen people fall prostrate. Not slain in the spirit because that means that they're dead in the spirit. <laughs> okay? You don't catch the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit not flying past you like you got to grab on to the Holy Spirit. Okay? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, not, that's not what happened. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit fills you, meaning it goes into, enter into you. Okay? You know what I'm saying? All right. So, when I seen these things, it scared me at first. When I lay hands and pray for that sister and she fell back like that, I jumped back myself. Because you know why? I didn't have nobody there to really explain to me at that time what happened. Then one, one time my spiritual mother came over to me and she said, son, she said, you have the gift of healing. She said, you're a seer. I had a spiritual guy that started explaining these things to me and helping to cultivate the gifts inside of me. Because I personally didn't know what was happening. I was evolving spiritually. You know what I'm saying? My prayer life, my fasting life, it got stronger and it made me spiritually stronger. Okay, and I started, I started going higher. I started having visions and dreams and seeing these things happen. And I was like, man, what's going on with me? See, some people think these things is fiction. You know why? Because they're not one of the chosen ones. You got to understand, those of you who are supernatural, those of you listening to me, you're the chosen ones. 
You have spiritual gifts. You have divine gifts. You have a divine purpose in this earth. Just like the matrix Neo, the one. That's what Mashiach means. The anointed one. Okay? Christ is, is the same word. Okay? It's a Greek word for the anointed one. You are one of the chosen ones. You are the anointed one. You have a divine purpose. You were sent in this earth with a purpose. And you have to find that out what that is. Amar, I'm not going to define that for you. You have to seek and find for yourself and allow the universe to talk to you so you can know of a truth for yourself. I'm only here as a conduit to bring you to the divine, to usher you, to help you, to guide you. You don't have to get to the universe through me. I'm just a helper in this earth. All right? To help to open up your mind and to present things to you to be to get you to become a, a thinker. To strengthen your mind so you can become more philosophical and you'll start thinking into things. Because see, when you become a thinker, no longer can people manipulate you and control you. Okay? Now listen. We're all programmed. Whether we program positively or negatively, we're all programmed. All of us either are going to receive a download from the universe or we're going to receive an upload which is a lower dimension, which means information that come from man. The download is positive energy. The download is from the universe. In a dream I had where I was receiving information from above. I mean, it shot straight through what people would say, your crown chakra, straight through my mind, all the way through my body. When I awakened from this dream, I started getting revelation. I started getting words of knowledge and words of wisdom. And all these things started coming to me. All this different information started coming to me. All these things started breaking me free from these man-made traditions and doctrines and commandments. And I started evolving in my mind. It took me to a higher level. See, listen, you know the difference between... Man's teaching and the universe teaching you a divine teaching because man teaching incarcerates you. It puts you in a box. When you truly trap into the divine, you're limitless. There's no boundaries. There's no boundaries. You cannot put a cap on the wisdom of the universe. It has no beginning and it has no end. It's eternal. It's eternal. It is nothing like the teaching of man. If you remember the story of Yeshua, for those of you who ever read the Gospels, you will hear in that Gospel it says, they've never heard a man speak like this before. They've never heard these things. These are strange things to my ears. That's the reason why when people hear these type of teachings, it is strange to their ears because they really never heard the truth before. They had a form of the truth. The truth that they, they, that they so-called call the truth is actually lies. And the things that they call lies are actually the truth. Listen. We must evolve in our minds to the point where we are able to decipher What's man-made and what's divine? Listen, when you are deceived, you cannot recognize what is divine and what is inspired by man. When you're deceived, it's like choosing between a Pepsi and a Coke. They both look the same, doesn't it? If you pour Coke in a glass and you pour Pepsi in a glass, you can't discern which one is which. 
That's how it is when you are spiritually blinded by man-made traditions and doctrines and commandments that are parasitic. It clogs up your mind. It keeps you from thinking clearly. But when you actually have an encounter with the universe, with the divine, okay, then it becomes like oil and water. You ask the person, which one is the oil? I'm quite sure they'll be able to tell you because then it's vividly clear which one is which. When you receive revelation knowledge, my dear brothers and sisters and elders, this is what transpires when your mind actually opens. You no longer have to wrestle with what is false and what is true, what is synthetic and what is genuine, what is man's teaching and what's divine. Your discernment becomes very clear and keen. And it's like choosing between oil and water. Then you're able to decipher, okay, this is man's teaching. Oh, this is the divine teaching. Why? Because as you continue to pray, this is how you do this. You pray, you meditate. And the more familiar you come with the, come, uh, familiar with the voice of the, the divine, you'll be able to decipher between yourself, the divine, and what somebody else's opinion is. It's just like a relationship. Listen, if you have birthed a child, right? And that child was taken away from you. And then that child was presented to you 20 years later. Do you think that that child is going to know who you are? I think some of you know where I'm going with this. Okay, I'm going to repeat the question again. If you birthed a child and that child was taken away from you and 20 years later you was reintroduced to that child, do you believe that that child is going to know who you are? No. You know why? Because there's no relationship. There's no relationship. Okay? This is what happened to us when spirituality was taken away from us. Now that our true spiritual parent, now that the, to the true divine, the truth is being presented to us, we don't recognize what it is because we never had a relationship. We never had any communication with the truth. We only been in, in, in relationship with lies. So now that the truth is introducing itself to us, we can't recognize it. We can't identify it. We can't relate to it because we didn't never we never had a relationship with it in the beginning. Okay. I thank everybody for tuning in for this session. On today. And hopefully that this lesson was a blessing to you. I want to thank my brother, uh, King Jashir, for tuning in. You know, my queen, Amani Amari, she, she made a very good point. She said, that's why our Christianity is different because we covered up our original spiritual practices with that. And that's true. You know what I'm saying? That is so true. Okay. A lot of, some of our ancestors did preserve their traditions. Okay. And let me just be honest with you. The reason why we were forbidden to do these things because of those who enslaved us were afraid. They didn't understand it, so they damned it. They didn't understand it, and then they damned it. And ultimately what they did was they took away our true power. When you take away spirituality, you have taken away the power. Okay? You pulled the plug. 
Taking away our spirituality was pulling the pug. There's no energy there no more. There's no life there no more. All this stuff is a bunch of emotionalism. There is no power. It's delusional. Because you don't really come into the knowledge of who you are. You have based your relationship with the universe based on man-made principles. And you have followed after a roadmap that has led you to a dead end because it was created by man and you wasn't divinely inspired. It wasn't a, a, a divine inspiration. It was a man-made inspiration. It was a parasitic inspiration by negative energy forces that influenced the consciousness of men to make up these things that will not cause man to evolve in his or her consciousness for them to truly come into knowing their selves. Once you come into the knowledge of who you are, then you find your divine purpose in this life. And so what religion does is it's a blockade. It blocks you. It keeps you from knowing who you really are. Because in order for you to know who you really are, you have to first tap into the divine, tap into the creator, the one who created you. But they don't really want you to know the one who created you. They want you to worship the creation rather than the creator. They put themselves in between the creator and you and say, oh no, you can't, you can't get to the creator but through me. See, that's where that doctrine come from. There is nothing in Ephi, there is nothing in Voodoo telling you that you can't get to the to, to Ola Dumare unless you go through a man. There's nothing telling you that. Nothing whatsoever. It is a personal relationship between you and the divine. That is our spiritual system. Our spiritual system does not rob you of your culture. Our spiritual systems doesn't have all these rules and regulations. Our spiritual systems don't tell you, oh, a woman got to cover her hair. A woman toes can't show. A woman can't wear jewelry. Oh, you can't listen to music. Listen, if God is love and they say that God is love, then what's the problem with listening to a love song? That don't even make sense. If God is love and God created romance and love and passion, what is the problem with listening to love songs if God is love? So being that God created love, then why would God be against his, his or herself? But if you're listening to R&B music, you're listening to a love song like by Music Soul Child singing love. Oh, that's of the devil. That's that devil music. The devil? The devil. So you telling me that that song by Teddy Pendergrass, it feel good to love somebody when somebody love you back. Are you telling me the song by Anita Baker, Sweet Love, are you telling me that's of the devil? See, this is the reason why I cannot subscribe to these man-made teachings and doctrines. If you go to the movies, you're going to hell. If you watch the TV, you're going to hell. If you listen to the radio, you're going to hell. Man-made traditions and doctrines and commandments that will incarcerate you because there are some good things on social media. There are some good things on television. There are some good things on the radio. There are some good things in movies. But you have to be spiritually mature enough to know what will corrupt you and what will not. You have to be spiritually mature enough to discern these things. This is what our spirituality empowers you to do.
It frees your mind. What has incarcerated our people for centuries is that teaching about trusting the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Listen. Listen to me very carefully. If that's a problem with you using the wisdom because they say wisdom come from God. So being that wisdom come from God and I'm using wisdom by not allowing a man teaching that I know come from his own soul not to incarcerate me. How is that wrong? Because being that wisdom, if any man lacks wisdom, this is what they say, let him ask of God. Okay, now I have the wisdom, now I'm leaning to my own understanding. Because I'm not allowing man to incarcerate me and to put restraints on me that binds my mind up. Oh, okay, now I got enough sense not to take everything that I read and that I hear at face value now that's the devil. When you think that the, the true enemy would be one who does not want you to think, wouldn't the true enemy be the one that doesn't want you to use wisdom because wisdom and intellect came from the creator? You got dietary teachings laws that say if a person eat a turtle, if they eat a mouse, if they eat these things, then this Messiah is going to come back on the day of judgment and destroy them. Listen, family. That type of story sounds no different to me than a Christmas story about Santa Claus coming to bring me presents. That type of story is no different to me then Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer that's allegedly supposed to have a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you too would say that it glows. That type of story is no different to me than Frosty the doggone snowman. Listen, this is what religion does. I'm getting ready to close. Religion will have grown people walking around talking about Happy Easter and putting up pictures where Easter Bunny has eggs. This is what religion will do to you. Religion will have grown people thinking that a bunny lays eggs when a rabbit births bunnies. Just like a woman births a child from out of her from out of her womb, from out of her vagina, a rabbit has bunnies. A chicken lays eggs. This is what religion will have you doing. Religion will have you celebrating Christmas when Christmas has nothing to do historically with the birth of the Mashiach. This is what religion will have you doing. Religion will have you celebrating a pagan holiday, but yet you talk about paganism is wrong. But you celebrating Easter, where Easter is a goddess called Ishtar, where they used to unfortunately do sacrifices with the blood, take the blood, and put it on the eggs. And talking about that this goddess was going to bless them with fertility. Oh, yeah, that's right. Somebody, somebody, okay, Queen Mother Rhonda said the two fairy. Just like the two fairy. Listen, family, listen. The birth of this Jesus, okay? And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm embarrassed <laughs> that I used to even believe. But you know what, though? I was programmed to believe these things. 
It said, the story says, now, how can I debunk this? It's very easy. The story says that this being overshadowed this woman called Mary, and she was impregnated. Okay? That story is no different to me than Peter Pan. I'm not afraid of somebody who don't exist to judge my soul. If that story, think about this now, if that story, that story isn't even true. You can debunk that story just by them saying, oh, he was born of a virgin. First of all, first of all, Isaiah chapter number seven, okay, was a message to King Ahaz. It was, it was not a Mashiach prophecy. It wasn't. Isaiah, the story in Isaiah chapter number seven was a message to King Ahaz. Read it. Read it for yourself. Read it. And you will see that the prophet said to King Ahaz, oh, you seek out a sign. Well, this would be the sign because it was talking about a war that was supposed to happen. And King Ahaz was told by the prophet, allegedly that the Most High told the prophet, tell him to, to ask me for a sign. Ahaz said, no, I will not ask for a sign. Then, then, then according to the story, the story says that allegedly the Most High had told this prophet to tell King Ahaz, okay, I'm going to give you a sign that a child will be born and you got to keep reading. Not only did it says in the Hebrew, it doesn't mean, virgin doesn't mean what Christians say. Virgin for the Hebrew means a young woman. In the Hebrew text, this is the reason why you got to get into linguistics. Virgin means young woman in the Hebrew. It doesn't mean a woman that never had sex. That is a linguistical fact. So that story that you're reading in Matthew and in all those gospels is false. And the story don't even match up anyway, because first the angel said his name would be Jesus, according to the story. Now, if you read the 1611 version, it says Aesus. It was spelled with an I. In the Greek and in the Hebrew, Listen to me now. Listen very carefully. I'm getting ready to close. And we're going to do a part. We're going to do another one tomorrow. We're going to start from here tomorrow. I'm going to start here. Okay. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go into another session tomorrow. Listen. In the Hebrew and in the Greek, even to this day, there is no J. So that Jesus wasn't even translated in the Greek tongue that way. And some people like to say it's Greek. No, it's not. That J letter came from the English language. It is not Hebrew and it is not Greek. Okay. Now listen, let me show you how confused these people are. These people claim to be Jews, right? These same people, the Ashkenazis, the Khazaris, the ones that's over in Israel right now, the you know, the fair-skinned people over there, right? Let me show you how confused these people are and these Hebrew Israelites, and we're going to start off with this next time I come on here. You have so-called Hebrew Israelites calling themselves bishops. Bishop is a Greek word. Bishop is not a Hebrew word. This is the reason why you can't let man fool you. They call themselves, we're the real Jews. First of all, if you claim to be a Hebrew, there's no J. So how are you a Jew? So these same people, the Ashkenazis and these so-called Hebrew Israelites that claim to be Jews, they all are delusional. They all lost in their brainwash. You don't even know your own language. You calling yourself a Jew, but yet you say you speak Hebrew and there's no J in your 
and there's no J in your language. Signing out. Thank you everybody for tuning in to your spiritual growth sessions. Um, this is yours truly again, Amar Mari. Please ensure that you go to our YouTube channel and you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kevin Loud Unity Lines. I provided the link in the header of this video. Also, if you'd be so kind to follow us on Instagram, Instagram, it is Alkebalon underscore unity underscore alliance. I also provided the link in the header of this video. Um, again, this is not to be famous. It's for you to receive empowering content. This, this program is to help those who have been programmed by man-made tradition and doctrine and commandments that are parasitic to be deprogrammed. All right. This is to help those of you who want to be free to evolve in your mind and to be free and to come into the knowledge of who you are and walk in power. We're going to continue to have more of these spiritual sessions. I'm going to continue to share some of my experiences with you. And hopefully these things will encourage you on your path and to stay on this path and not to withhold any information, but for you to share this information so it can bring about transformation in other people's lives.